guys and welcome back to the channel daughter of increase my name is nate denise for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video and i post some videos every wednesday all about my faith god christ and expanding the kingdom of god so tonight's video is going to be part two to the first portion and the first portion of this was just me redoing my bible annotating key so if you want a close-up look and to know what each color means just click the add to that video but part two is me actually studying the bible so if you guys would have followed me on um, Instagram, you would have saw that I posted up this image about two days ago um, of me studying Galatians 1. And it felt so good. I spent two hours studying this and um, it felt so good. Now, I'm supposed to be doing day three today, but I'm actually doing day two because I skipped yesterday for some reason. Don't know why. Um, oh, no, because we had went out and I got back late. Um, so... I'm going to be doing day um, chapter 2, which is only 21 verses. And the reason why I'm actually studying is because for church, we have our Bible studies every Tuesday via Zoom. And we were told to read Galatians 4 and 5 and really um, make the contrast in verses 12 to 28 specifically. Uh, but I had forgot. So I said, you know what? I'm going to just read the entire book of Galatians. It's only six chapters. So that's six days of reading. Um, so I definitely want to finish it before Tuesday. Um, I'm a little bit behind just because I missed out on yesterday reading. So I'm going to have to double up probably Monday or tonight, depending on how I feel. Um, it is currently 8.08. Um, so I might get some dinner in the middle of recording. So if you see any like choppy clips, it's because I had paused and went to eat. So yeah. But um, yeah, I'm going to just show you guys me studying um it won't be a full study with me because i'm not going to show like the entire thing because i'm going to spend at least two three hours in my bible but i have my main bible which is the um new king james journaling journal the word bible um this one is the two floral cloth overboard mine is a little dirty it is fraying but that is okay i love this thing so much um i feel bad because i've been in this bible since 2017 but um i love the fact that i can go back to say Ruth let me just flip to it I can go back to Ruth and see how I first started out to how I now study the word of God which is so like interesting and amazing to see so I'm, it's, it's a blessing and a curse but I'm trying to finish this up so that I can use my other journaling bibles and restudy some of the books I've studied so um this is like me studying each book for the first time sort of kind of and then my other journal Bibles will be me restudying them for however many times I've studied them. But um, yeah, this is the main one I use. And I don't use a color coding system. I just use Zebra Mild Liner Highlighters, which I'll show you guys shortly. But um, I just make colors. That's it. Okay, so we have that. Um, that's the Bible I'm going to be writing my notes in. My actual study Bible I'm going to be focusing on is in here. This is a case from my old um, Zondervan, I think it is, Bible bag. I think I have a video on this bag. Click the eye. But um, this is the Spiritful Life Bible, third edition, if you guys can see. And this is like my go-to study Bible, my go-to church Bible. This is the Bible. And this is the one that I use a color coding system in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the scriptures first in here, marking and doing my annotating in this Bible first. And then I'm going to also study in other Bibles. So I'm going to show you guys the Bibles now. So the main Bible I'll be using as like a secondary is the thompson chain reference of course this is a bible that references itself scripture references scripture this is like the best commentary bible ever so i'm definitely going to be utilizing this bible okay so the next bible i'm going to be using is the fisher of men bible in the csb translation this was actually gifted to me from Sierra. thank you sis um one of you lovely ladies sent this to me and i so love it i did get a paperback copy um the night of my ordination but she ended up sending me the like soft leather touch version which i love so much so i'm going to be using this because some of the points in here are important and this bible really focuses on evangelism discipleship and counseling so some of the um notes in here are more like practical real life with um evangelizing and being a disciple and things like that so i'm going to use this um then i have more bibles so um <laughs> I have the Everyday Matters Everyday Matters Bible for Women um, from Hendrickson Bibles, the NLT translation. I'm going to be using this because it has some really great information in it, so I love it. And I'm going to be using my Study Bible for Women from Holman, CSB translation. So I do have two CSB Bibles that I'm using, but that's okay. It's okay. So we have this. Um, this is a woman's Study Bible. And 
I recently got this baby in the mail. I already did a first impressions and unboxing. I'm not sure if that video is going to be up before this video, but um, I'm going to be using the Women's Study Bible and the CSB translation from Cross. I mean, the ESV translation, excuse me, from Crossway. So I'm so excited to use this for today. This is my first time actually using it. So we have that. So that is one, two, three, four, five Bibles. And including my journaling Bible, that's six Bibles that I have. And this is normal for me. I normally have this many Bibles when I'm studying. Um, I just, I love having different translations, different study Bibles because they each have different notes. Okay, take a sip of my tea. Next are my zebra outliners. So, I have my 11 colors that I use for my key, which is this. So again, like I said, go watch the video. But I have those 11 colors, and then I have some other colors as well, specifically for using in my study Bible. Now, when it comes to marking in my journaling Bible, I'm just going to grab whatever color I grab. But I have these separated specifically so that I'm not confused when I go to use my study Bible first. So that's the first Bible I'm going to actually touch before getting into my journaling Bible. Um, other things I have are the zebra f301 ballpoint pen love this pen so much i'm gonna put this other one back but i love this pen so much it works really well in all of my bibles so i use this one and then i have my pigma pigma micron 01 as well i have some post-it notes so all of these are from walmart um they're hard to even find now so i have the owl one of course classic owl with the nerd with the um glasses so we have that one um this one came out oh, years ago when they had the my glam sort of happy planner dupe planners that walmart was selling um maybe two three years ago 2018 2019 about two years ago um but it came with some sticky notes so i have these cute little sticky notes again from walmart um and i'm probably just going to use the purple and the pink and maybe this color here i might use a white but really more so it's just going to be this this and that, that that i pick and then i have these also from um walmart this one with the pen and gear planners that were out um so i had picked up two packs of the post-it notes so i have those so we have these and these are really pretty i have already used them in last night's study or the night before um there is one other thing i need to grab so let me grab that i take that back there were like three other things i needed to grab actually four but the other one i'm just i'm not grabbing it's too big um normally i have my concordance i use it on the computer or my phone my computer is on the tv right now but my computer's there so it's gonna be weird to get over there so i decided to grab two of my dictionaries i have my compact bible dictionary from nelson um thomas nelson right yeah thomas nelson it's just a compact one really simple and then i also have my nelson biblical cyclopedic index this was like the first sort of like concordance bible dictionary i had and i this is well loved well used i have cracked the spine sorry guys books are falling <laughs> but i have cracked the spine on this baby um like it's just she well loved i might have to invest in a new one just because i didn't mean to crack the spine so i'm gonna look into a new one but we have that and then the last thing i have is the rose book of Bible charts, maps, and timelines from Rose Publishing, also Hendrickson. Um, so we have this, and I picked this up from Walmart for about 19 18 bucks, 17 probably seventeen dollars. Um, it retails for twenty two ninety nine, but you know Walmart always has books forty fifty percent off. Um, they do have the second edition, but they only have it in Spanish, which like I don't speak Spanish. Um, I understand a little bit of Spanish, um, but I don't fully read and understand it. So I'm kind of sad because they have the second volume, but not in english so we need them to get this together but i know someone um a few people said that they didn't really like they liked the review that i did but because of the review they weren't going to get it because they didn't agree with some things within here and that's perfectly fine um i said this before i'm gonna say it again when i buy my resources they're not the end all be all for me um every resource is not going to be a hundred percent perfect like whatsoever um and i use these resources and compare them to scripture i specifically got this because it has the um timeline in here it has the genealogy of jesus like all of his relatives and families it talks about the different feasts and the holidays um you have family trees it talks about the prophets it talks about the tribes um it talks about specific things from the bible there are certain things in here that i really want to look into and then it has a part in the back when it talks about christianity cults and religions and comparing them and what other cultures believe and you know things like that so that stuff 
interest me per se so that's why i have this um i i love it it talks about the different de denominations because i don't honestly know the difference I, I'm, I'm christian non-denominational so i don't you know this catholic orthodox lutheran angelican congregational anabaptist methodist presbyterian like i i don't know pentecostal churches of christ i don't even know that that was a thing baptist like i've heard of baptist churches i've heard of pentecostal churches i've heard of lutheran but i don't exactly know what they are so um you know they also talk about the seventh day advent adventist and things like that so i got it because it's helpful for me of course i always correlate everything back to scripture okay that's number one but um i use it i don't find anything wrong with it um they have the names of jesus in here the names of god and here are the names of the holy spirit like key bible stories like i i like this for me for the use of being a resource so that was a little rambling but yeah i have all of my things so i have everything here i am not going to flip the camera around and we are going to dive into galatians chapter two um i'm probably gonna throw some like lo-fi music in here it might be an audio like a um voiceover i'm not sure how this video is actually going to come out i know that i wanted to do it because i miss studying the word of god and i miss studying with you guys but until i actually sit down and make my actual bible study video which is coming soon um i figured i would share with you guys my personal study time so um yeah let's just jump in okay guys so here we are galatians 2 so the first step i normally do is pray before reading just to invite the holy spirit in and just to make sure that i'm focused and i have no distractions so i'm just going to quickly pray heavenly father i thank you for this opportunity just to, to spend this time with you to commune and to study your word lord i thank you for the opportunity just to soak in your presence god while i'm taking this time holy spirit please enter in into the study and help me to understand anything that i don't understand to question anything that doesn't make sense to me holy spirit i'm asking that you reveal whatever needs to be revealed to me if there is any changes that i must make please reveal that to me holy spirit god i just thank you for this opportunity and this time to be with you learn more about you and to grow in my relationship amen so um pretty quick and simple um the next thing i normally do is put on some sounds so i am gonna do that i do have a candle burning right now it is a walmart mainstays pumpkin spice yes pumpkin spice everything in my room it smells lovely um i have my tea of course i have my pen the um zebra f301 ballpoint pen annotating key my zebra my liners my post-it notes are over here and i'm gonna put on some sounds so hey google put on fire sounds hopefully this works there we go. So, I normally would listen to gospel, but I'm just going to put the fire sounds on just so that I'm focused. And, um, yeah, from here on, I'm just going to speed it up and you guys can see me study.
Okay, guys, so it is around 10.35 right now, so about two and a half hours just about of um, me studying the word, and I'm going to show you guys my Bible. So here is, um, here are my notes, basically. So that's what it looks like with the notes on it. Um, for verse 16, I did not have space to write, so I did write it on um, these little sticky notes here. And then I did pretty much what I did the other day with um, Judaism. That was like the big word. And then I wrote some stuff about it. And then for this one, justification stuck out to me. I am not a calligrapher. I don't know how to hand letter. So I pretty much just write in script and then trace it in pen. Um, that is my <laughs> sort of take on it. So I just have some stuff here. And um, I'll flip the camera around and share my thoughts with you guys in a second. We have that. I'm um, gonna have this sticky note as well with more notes on it. Well, just definitions from the words over here. So I'll probably stick that up here. Great. Um, so that is the journal and Bible. I'm gonna put this to the side for a second and show you guys my actual study Bible. So again, I use my color code key for that. And I'm just going to stick um, my annotating key, color code key in the Bible and close it up because I am done with it. And the only other Bible I really got notes from was the ESV Women's Study Bible. And um, I just marked, I don't know if you guys can see, I just underlined some stuff pretty much, um, definitions of justified and things like that. And then I also did read through the little uh, reflection on the back. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I did. So, I'm going to flip the camera around now and talk to you guys about my thoughts. So, I'll just um, run through some of my thoughts of what I read today. So basically it was all about justification and um, really pretty much defending the gospel. Basically, Paul... Um, decides to set out to Jerusalem, if I'm not mistaken, right? Jerusalem, yeah, he went to Jerusalem. This time he went with Barnabas and Titus. Titus was a Greek, and if I'm not mistaken, he was uncircumcised from what it says in verse 2 and 3. Um, and basically, what I like about Paul is that whatever he said to the Gentiles, he also relayed back to the um, Jews. So it wasn't a different message. It wasn't a different gospel. It was the same gospel shared and um it was there was no secrets and what I, I i like that because a lot of the times when you see churches nowadays um the message they give to believers and the message that they give to unbelievers is very different um sometimes sometimes you're preaching the um prosperity gospel in church and then to unbelievers you're you're preaching that brimstone fire and hell um sort of message and it should not be that way. It should be one message across the board, the one true gospel that it is of Jesus Christ, his life, death, and resurrection, and how he reconciled us back to Christ. So I like that that is mentioned. Um, there's, there's just like so many good points. I'm trying to figure out what to um, pinpoint. So um, he talks about the false brethren that's, that, that basically came in, and he was referring to the Judaizers, Judea, 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 Judea is what it's called. Um, who basically believed um, they had a legalistic type of belief and where they felt that faith was not enough for you to be saved. You also, on top of faith, had to abide by the law. And the point of grace is that you now abide by grace and not the law because they don't work hand in hand. No man can fulfill the law. No man can perfectly live out that law. And if you make one slip up, it's death. Um, grace comes in because God knows that we cannot live that perfect life. He knows that we can't walk the straight and narrow because we're going to stray off course. And um, the Judaizers, they basically denied the cross, basically the work of Christ. It was like, well, yeah, you can have faith, but it's not enough. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. So I like that he talked about that and was basically saying how um, that they come in and stealth so they basically they come in and avoid detection with people that you know 
and um, they try to learn your ways and find ways that they can sneak their sort of beliefs onto you and that's pretty true of people today you have people who will claim to be your friend or claim to be like your bro and sis when in actuality they're just sneaking into your life to sort of um turn it upside down on its head and it also says that they might bring us into bondage and um in this case he's talking about bondage to the law instead of being free in christ because in christ we have freedom from the law we are you know fully free but in my mind when i think about this um about bondage it can be bondage to whatever it is um maybe you have people who know you don't drink anymore and um they they're like okay cool no problem they try to be cool with you and then they try to sneakily find a way to get you back into drinking oh drink a little take a little shot here or let's have one sip of wine here and let's go drink this here and then all of a sudden you're falling back into your old habits so bondage to whatever it is whatever sin it is um and of course to the law but in our times it's not more so the law but more so to the different types of sins um it's just it's so good i don't know what to to, to talk about because i don't want this video to be too long um sped up for you guys it was probably like 30 minutes sped up possibly depending on how fast i made it because i'm definitely going to make it more than triple time speed so you guys saw it sped up but for me in real time it was about two and a half hours of studying from 8 to 10 35 so um about two hours if you take 30 minutes out because i stopped to eat so two hours of studying is pretty much the time that i normally do um so oh there was a part in verse six when he said those who seem to i'm gonna read it it says but from those who seem to be something whatever they were it makes no difference to me god shows personal favoritism to no man and those who seem to be something added nothing to me and for me what i put is that what and who someone else is should never affect the validity of my ministry that god has given me and a lot of the times we play the um comparison game and i talked about this before how like i compare my ministry to other people's ministry but um there's no favoritism like someone may have hundreds of thousands of subscribers someone may only have two subscribers but the validity of your ministry if it is god given their ministry should have no effect on your ministry when their ministry begins to have an effect on your ministry then you need to begin to question like did god give this to me was this something about given to me from the holy spirit was this something that jesus revealed to me because what i like is that um paul always makes mention of him being revealed he says i went by revelation i did this by revelation this was revealed to me like he is always confirming that this was not of man this was not of self it was of the holy spirit it was of god it was of christ so i love that he's always doing that um then when you go to verses 11 to 21 he talks about not returning to the law and and this it really shocked me because we know who peter is peter is basically one of he's the rock of the church right like the pillar of the church besides james and um john i think no not john who was it yeah james cephas and john so james peter and john were like the three pillars the three uh the, the inner circle for christ of the 12 right so um you see in verse 11 to 21 that they basically got a little beef going on like paul came up and he was like mm -mm, peter you slacking you falling off a little bit and i need to correct you but he did it in love and he did it defending the gospel it wasn't sort of it wasn't in a manner of i don't care well i don't want to say i don't care that you're like so it, it wasn't superior versus in, inferior and inferior versus superior type of thing if you get what i'm saying like um it was all for god and um he says it. he said i would stood him to his face so this is letting me know that paul was not a people pleaser but a god pleaser even if it meant calling out other leaders when they fall off and i love that because a lot of the times in churches we see people have issues with their leaders their pastors the elders the deacons whatever they 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 have issues with them and they see things that are wrong but they feel like they can't say anything because they're just a lay member or they're not in the rank of their church and um i love that paul didn't care like he was like i was to him like no i i told him to his face he was a hypocrite like paul was on some like pettiness on the t like <laughs> you guys gotta read it again i'm reading in the new king james so if you're reading it like in the esv and the nlt it'll be a lot more easier to understand because i found that i had to reread some verses a couple times like a couple times and then when i read it in the other translations it made sense but um 
yeah, Paul was basically being a hypocrite. He was down for the Gentiles, but when people from James's church, which I believe originated in Jerusalem, came around, he tried to act like he didn't know the Gentiles and that he wasn't cool with them. But you're hanging with these Judaizers when you know what the gospel is. You preach the gospel. You knew Christ. So now you're playing sides. So now you're being a hypocrite. And, um, you know, Paul was like, no, that's not right. You can't do that. You know the gospel just like I know the gospel. You were basically given an um, commission to preach to the um, Gentile, to, to the Jews, excuse me. And then Paul himself was commissioned to speak to the Gentiles. And they, um, there is no difference in Gentile versus Jew, circumcised versus uncircumcised when it comes to grace because we're all equal in the eyes of God under grace. Um, so that just was like mind blowing. Um, verse 16, I had two thoughts. He said, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of law, I said that obeying the law to perfection is highly impossible. Man's effort always fails. That's why we can't walk. That's why we can't work to be made right. And then it says, by faith in Christ. And I put that faith in Christ alone saves me, makes me right with God. He sees Christ and not me. If God saw who we really were, <laughs> we all know we would get death. So the fact that I can now come to God because he no longer looks at me, but he sees Christ, Christ Christ's blood washes me clean of everything that I've done, everything that I'm going to do. Yes, there are natural consequences and spiritual consequences, but there's no death for me. Um, so I love that. There's a part in verse 18 where he says, For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Um, basically, he's talking about reverting back to the law and um, you being a Ju Judah Judaizer that makes you a, um, a sinner before God. So basically, if I am free of whatever sin it is, whatever sin, um, I'll use sex as an example because sex is like the biggest thing that a lot of us fall into. So, um, if I know sex out of wedlock is not good in the eyes of God, right? If I know if, if I'm having sex with somebody and um, I know that that sex, that, that means that now I'm spiritually married to that person, right? So if I know that I'm now going to be celibate or stop, whatever the case may be for whatever, um, I stop that, right? And then I fall back into it. That makes me... I don't want to say worse of a sinner, but it really just builds back up what I was doing, which makes me deeper of a sinner. I hope I'm making sense because it sounds weird saying it out loud. I'm going to have to read the um, article inside of the Women's Study Bible because it made sense. It's not making sense as I say it, so give me a second. Okay. Did they explain it in here? I think they did explain it in here. Verse 16, I think it was was it 16 no so um it says ironically the one who is mostly most clearly seen to be a sinner is not the one on the outside of the law beating the gentiles but the one who is under the law so if you so in this case there's basically saying that if you choose to go back under the law knowing that christ died for you on the cross knowing that all you need is faith to be saved um that makes everything that christ did redundant and now that makes you worse than the unbeliever because the person who doesn't know christ the unbeliever they don't know but you as a believer know and still choose to go right back down that path which then makes and negates everything christ did for you and then it kind of makes it null and void hopefully i'm making sense i'm a little tired so yeah um <laughs> but yeah i just i really enjoyed it a lot i really enjoyed it i wasn't sure if i was gonna get a lot from it but i did get quite a lot my thoughts are not coming out properly right now because like i said i'm tired just just a little tired um i'm tempted to get some coffee and i plan on staying up for 24 hours pray for me um because i'm going to be doing a reading block today so uh yeah but i enjoyed this study um i hope you guys enjoyed this study with me video um i will definitely do more of these i do have a bible study coming really really soon the bible study that is coming up is going to be on um first samuel 17 verses 31 to 54 i think it is 54 um and it's basically about david and goliath but i'm going to be doing a um scripture study on that and really diving deep into that specific passage of scripture so that is coming soon definitely by the end of october i just gotta get the time to actually record because it's a little hard 
but it's coming um and stay tuned for the next few videos because like i've been mentioning i have a surprise giveaway coming i'm not gonna say which video it's just gonna pop up in the middle of one of my videos so yeah so i've been seeing a lot of people do this thing where like they tell subscribers if or viewers or family however you want to call yourselves um they basically say to leave like an emoji just to show that you watch the whole video so the emoji i'm going to pick is going to be that pretty flower it looks like this if you stayed to the end of this video use this emoji right here and if you can't use emojis or don't have emojis i want you to put pink flower just literally write pink flower um just so that i know that you um stay to the end of the video but that is it i'm tired i'm gonna go have me a cup of coffee <laughs> cup of coffee i got some water here i'm gonna have some coffee and um i might go to sleep and probably do my 24 hour challenge tomorrow i don't know i also need to rehearse because i have to dance on sunday with a hurt foot so yeah pray for me um well by the time you see this video i would have already either danced or not danced so in the middle of me editing i'll let you guys know if i did or not because um my toe decided to hurt again i think i told you guys about when i kind of like fractured my toe broke my toe whatever you call it and i had to wear the little thing on my foot yeah that toe still is not completely healed it's starting to hurt so we'll see if i dance we'll see. but i'm gonna go i'm gonna go i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye